Blessed be the name of the Lord God Most High. It is such an awesome privilege once again to be in the presence of God and to know that God has a word for us. Let us pray. O omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient God, the one with whom there's no shadow of turning. Here are your children in this moment again, God, and we come at your feet seeking a word from you. We know, God, that unless you speak, we will not know where to turn. And unless you hold us, God, we will have no strength. So hold us close now, we pray. Amen. Things that are written are said to be more formal and certainly more permanent. We can talk about a lot of stuff, but as the saying goes, if it's not written, it doesn't matter. Writing your thoughts make it easier to recall them, and writing your plans make it more likely that you will abide by them. Nevertheless, it is the writing of God that has real power. Jesus himself alluded to this power when he said in Luke 11 verse 20, But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. There are four accounts in the scriptures of God actually writing. Twice with the Ten Commandments, once on Belshazzar's wall, and once when Jesus wrote in the sand. Moses was God's trusted servant. God had given him the instructions to build a sanctuary that was given verbally. But when it came to the commandments that speaks to the character of God, God wrote it himself. Exodus 24 verse 12 tells us, The Lord said to Moses, Come up to the mountain and stay here, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and commandments that I have written for their instructions. And when that one was broken, God told Moses, chisel out two more stones like the first ones, and I will write on them the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. This was meant to be instructions. This is meant to be instructions, and it came directly from the hands of God. In Daniel chapter 5, Belshazzar, the proud and ungodly grandson of Nebuchadnezzar, was having one of his fancy balls, an idol-worshipping session, when suddenly the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall near the lampstand in the royal palace. The king watched as the hand wrote. His face turned pale and he was so frightened that his legs became weak and his knees were knocking, says Daniel 5 verses 5 to 6. That very same night, when Daniel had interpreted the writing, that very night, Belshazzar, king of Babylon, was slain. The writing was judgment. God's writings are important. The ancient people who sang the Negro spiritual, My Lord is a writing all the time, understood this very well. They sang, my Lord is writing, my Lord is writing, my Lord is writing all the time. He sees all you do, he hears all you say, my Lord is writing all the time. I wonder what that meant to them, since we know from scriptures that there are only four accounts of the active hands of God writing. But it seems that they were looking far beyond just the physical moment when God wrote and they were looking to the permanence and the unchanging nature of the writings of God. Psalm 119 verse 89 tells us, Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. And second, it was a warning to the oppressors. God is seeing all that you do, and God is hearing all that you say. He's taking note. This song chronicles the journey of the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt 
something that they could relate to. The lines were interspersed with the words all through it. My God is a writing all the time. Well, when I was down in Egypt land, oh, I heard some talk about a Christian man. He held his hand in my God's hand and well, he led his children to the promised land. My God is a writing all the time. This is a sermon in and of itself, a sermon that declares who really has power. It tells of Moses leading the children out, but only because Moses' hands were in the hands of God. And note that they said, in my God's hands. It is a song of expecting righteous deliverance. A song that says that God has already written freedom and deliverance in our lives. So it cannot be changed, but it had to be achieved while their hands were in God's hands. This is the essence of the nonviolent movement. The forgiveness that flavored the struggle and the love that seemed to be sprinkled all over the movements. They heeded the words of Proverbs 4 verses 13 to 14. Hold on, says the scripture, to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. It is not easy to remember the writings of God when you're angry, and especially when you have a right to be angry. Imagine the horrors of slavery, and yet in that moment, they're talking about the writings of God, and they're referencing Moses with his hand in God's hands. This is a kind of nobleness to, for which we should strive towards. We cannot allow others to draw us out as the saying goes. To do this is to disregard the unchanging nature of God's words. It will be disrespecting the permanence of his handwritten laws. You see, there's no excuse for unrighteousness and there's no justification for breaking God's laws, not even slavery. It seems daunting, I get it. But this is how we are set apart from the world. And this is how we gain victory over the enemy. So the message is, stick to the writings of God. Heed the instructions in his words, so you won't have to deal with the judgment in his words. Challenge yourself to pray good prayers for those who hurt you. To show kindness to those who willfully despise you. And to watch out for those who trivialize you as a person. Stay in the writings of God. Jesus told us, blessed are those who hear the words of God and observe them. Let us pray. Our holy, unchangeable God. You're unchangeable just like your principles, God. And over and over you tell us that there is absolutely no time when we have a right to go against your principles. So God, we ask you today to hold us really close to you. Help us, Holy Spirit, to keep our hands in the hands of God so that we can walk the path of righteousness and thus have the victory over the unrighteous. And we say, Amen and